Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the major HIT-551 Drill Master 2 kit door lock installation tool. So it's a HIT-551 is what it is. It's a Drill Master 2. Basically, in this kit, you can do almost you can do everything you need to do when it comes to drilling a two and an eighth inch or an inch and a half hole into a door, whether it be two and three eighths, two and three quarter, three and three quarter, or five inch back set. Okay, so you get everything. How many times do you drill a three and three quarter back set? Probably not often, but they certainly exist. Um, if anything, you're going to drill two and three eighths all the time. You'll drill two and three quarter all the time, maybe five inch occasionally. Uh, three and three quarter is a back set that you'll see in hospitals. Um, and the reason for that is push-pull latches. In a hospital, you may not think of it, or you might be extremely familiar with them. That's the kind of handle that's on the door that is basically a long paddle. It's a touch pad. It's a piece of architectural metal. It's about that wide, and it's about that tall, and you can push that. But more importantly is you can use your elbow. You can use the back of your arm. You don't have to touch your hands, which you've just washed before you enter, or sanitized before you enter the patient area. So the three and three quarter is nice because it moves that hardware a little bit further away from the jam so that you can hit it with your elbow, hit it with your hand, your forearm, whatever the case might be. This kit is really cool in the sense that it does that. It does all four of those back sets. Um, will you ever drill a three and three quarter? Probably not. Um, could you end up getting into a job where you need to drill a hundred of them? Yeah, I suppose, and you've got the tool to do it. This 551 is inclusive of lots of piece parts. Obviously, the ability to handle those four back sets and the pieces that are needed to do that. It's going to include a two and an eighth, inch and a half multi-score bits, the high-speed steel version. It'll include a one inch, basically a spade cutter. It's going to include the drill bushings that you'll need. It's going to include um, the latch marking tools. You'll be able to mark for the latch of a deadbolt, strike, a two and three quarter tall strike, which is, you're going to use that in the frame. You'll be able to do a latch bolt preparation. You'll be able to do a full lip strike in the jam again. There's going to be a strike locator as well. So once you've drilled that one inch hole, let's say, in the edge of the door. You can close the door, take the strike locator and sneak it into the two and an eighth and then push it and mark the location of the center line of where you're gonna prep for that strike. It is here. The only thing that's not in here are the installation instructions. It is a tackle box. I mean, it's literally, I'm no fisherman, but it's a tackle box. Weighs 18.3 pound. and is literally full of all kinds of major manufacturing goodness. Your lift out tray, that's going to have bushings, the strike locator, your three bits. The bushings are there when you are drilling into the edge of the door through the tool. So I'll grab all of this and I'll put it aside. You're going to have your, what they call the breakout plates. You're going to need these when you're drilling with a hole saw. You'll have two sets of them. Uh, two at inch and a half and two at uh, two and an eighth. You're going to have other bushing piece parts and the Allen wrenches that you'll need to work the tool. These posts are for doing a three and three quarter back set. You will get your latch marking tool. I believe that's two and a quarter by inch and an eighth versus it being two and a quarter by one inch. This is certainly a two and three quarter tall deadbolt strike, uh, strike marking tool. You will then get your two and a quarter inch tall full lip strike tool. Then of course the business end. This is the HIT 55 is what this is. You can buy this tool without all the extra components as well. 
this right here is how it's done. We're going to be able to center the tool. What's interesting is you can even change the center line uh, of where you're going to drill the 7 8 15 16 or 1 inch, probably just 7 8 or 1 inch on this, where you're going to drill that hole for the latch bolt uh, in case you have like an inch and three quarter thick door, but then there's quarter inch of plywood on one side for some reason. Um, you can alter this tool to adjust the center line for that. You might want to go right in the center of the inch and three quarter thick door, but shift it over for that quarter inch plywood. Okay, really nice handle. Aluminum, steel, brass, it's all here with this tool. So what we're going to do is let's let's go through this tool literally step by step and show all the adjustments and I will use the installation instructions as the crutch to go about through doing that so I can systematically work through the tool rather than just as it comes to my head. Then we'll switch to the screen view and we will um, go through those instructions and just make sure that we can put all the pictures and the steps together. Um, and we will definitely go through all the parts as we do all of that. So let's, uh, let's move on. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, so the bottom line is with this <clears throat> HIT 55, or actually HIT 551, the 551 means it includes stuff not included in the HIT 55. You can drill those inch and a half, two and an eighth inch holes, two and three eighths, two and three quarter, three and three quarter, and five inch back sets. Let, this part of the video is we're going to go through, and I, again, I'm going to use the installation instructions as just, you know, the bullet points um, to demonstrate this. Otherwise, I'll be likely jumping all over. Um, so, to adjust for two and three eighths, two and three quarter, and five inch back sets, Install the bracket studs as shown in the picture. Make sure studs are fully threaded in. So the bottom line is they're already installed. You can remove both of You need two of them because when you clamp that onto the door, you want that to sit flat. So there's two of them, here and here. You can remove them, which you'll need to possibly, and you can nest them here. You can hold them here. There's going to be an Allen wrench in the package for it. I think I'd like to take these parts out as we go through them, set them aside so we know what we have. <clears throat> so this will definitely allow us to to remove that. Okay, you get the point and you can store them here. Now, what is the back set when these are in? Well, I would imagine it's probably two and three quarter, but I'm not sure. Uh, however, we can be absolutely sure by just measuring it. So let's take a look. To that bolt, oops, you can't see my tape measure. To that bolt, down to the center of the first hole, does appear to be two and three eighths. Back over here, does appear to be five inch. So with these bolts installed, and I'm gonna verify that right now. So with the bolts installed, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. You're going to drill two and three eighths or five inch, depending on where you're placed. Two and three eighths or five inch. That's super simple. You want to do two and three quarter, you remove the two bolts. And of course, as you would guess, the height of that head is going to be three eighths of an inch because two and three eighths plus three eighths is going to be two and three quarter. And indeed, that is three eighths of an inch thick. So if you remove the two bolts, that means this is going to go further. You'll drill a two and three quarter here. You would never need to drill five and three eighths. Um, now, since we're talking about back sets, these would be the two pins that you would install to do three and three quarter. So your two bolts will come out. You will secure them here. You will put the three and three quarter bolts in tighten them in and then at that point three and three quarters is going to be over here is what it'll be because those bolts will force you to you know this the hit 55 will be hanging more off the door than usual so your three and three quarter will be here okay. 
So that's what <clears throat> these two bolts are for. Let's remove them from the package. Take a look. There they are. Okay. And I'll talk about at the end why I'm not a fan of lock installation kits. I don't. I own them because I. I do own them. I, I do have them, but I never use them. And I'm going to go. I'll, I will talk about why, and I will also tell you why I'm in the minority position when it comes to that opinion. Um, okay, so. Yeah, the installation instructions go on to tell us you want two and three quarter, you remove the back set locks. Store the back set studs, is what they're called. Um, page three of the installation instructions is if you want to do three and three quarter, you add the three and three quarter back set stud. Um, and then it will look like we'll show you that. To adjust the centering, there are three drill guides supplied with the HIT-55 for use when drilling the edge bore. They are held in with an Allen screw. Choose from a 7 8 one inch or the brass guide for use with our spade type or multi-spur bit. Okay, let's take a look at that. So what they're saying is right in the edge is where you're going to install one of your three drill guides. They're held in... Um, with this screw that's here. So you'll use an Allen wrench. I'm going to guess that it's this one. And you're going to need to remove that, basically. And then I'll show you the drill guides. They are up in the uh, they're, they're, all three of them are up in the top in the tray portion, here, here, and then here. Let's take them all out and look at them. And according to the manufacturer, you're going to have a guide for 7 eighths and for 1 inch. Okay. Um, if you're doing all residential locks all the time, that 7 eighths will be the one that you want to use but you want to look at the instructions uh, of the, lock, the template from the manufacturer that you're working with. 15 16 is not an unusual size to drill there either, um, but that barrel of the latch bolt would be 7 8 You can always drill 1 inch, but 1 inch is a little bit funny when you have a 1 inch wide latch bolt in the sense that 2 and a quarter by 1 inch, right in the center at inch and an eighth, you can see a little belly sometimes that's when you really do want to use that smaller bit. You would use a one inch when you're doing inch and an eighth wide latch bolts, which would be typical for commercial work. So what happens here is this just slides down in place. Okay, it's got this preparation down in it here. There are two bolts, nuts, there are two uh, bolt heads that are here. So the only time that that will sit completely flat is when you have it timed correctly. You'll insert your screw, and the head of the screw is just going to keep that bushing secure. That's all it's doing. So these two black bushings, 7 eighths and 1 inch. You can see one's bigger than the other. If you're going to be using the spade bit, you're going to use um, this brass bushing. It's going to go in there. You're going to leave that in there. This will stay captured inside the tool. Well, you'll you'll remove it when you're putting your tool away, but that's what you're going to use. Okay. Same concept. <clears throat> this is going to go in the hole. It's going to be held in with the screw. You're done. You're in good. You're in good shape. No need to demonstrate that any further. What we'll do is we'll put this screw back. This is an actual piece of inventory that's going to go right on the shelf for sale. All right, we'll put our Allen wrench back since we use that, <clears throat> and we'll put our bushings back. The one inch was here, the seven eighths was here, the brass bushing was here. <clears throat> so we've talked about the three drill guides. No problem. Now, to adjust the centering, we can talk about how to adjust the centering. Let's do that now. 
Now you may need to adjust the centering at some point. Um, I have seen doors that, like a garage door, residential application, garage door, someone took a quarter inch piece of plywood and glued it down to the face of the door um, because the door was starting to delaminate on the outside. You know, I've seen all kinds of stuff like that. The times when I see an unequal door thickness is woodworking clients of ours, generally large ones that are doing projects for very high-end retail. If it's high-end retail, I've supplied material to it. Whether it be shoes or purses or watches or cars, anything. You're going to very commonly have a typical door thickness, inch and three quarter, but then they've added one inch of high-end woodwork on one side. So now we've got a two and three quarter inch thick door, but what we really have is an inch and three quarter thick door with a one inch panel applied. But obviously your center line needs to be adjusted for that when you're prepping. Not only does your center line need to be adjusted when you're prepping for the lock, but your, but your hardware needs to be adjusted. Whether, depending on whether it's keyed or non-keyed, reverse bevel or in-swing, the parts that would be affected by that could be the length of the cylinder or the length of the thumb turn, the length of the strike lip, the length of the mounting screws, the length of the spindle on this side or the spindle on this side. So if you have an in-swing door, inch and three quarter thick door with a one inch panel applied on the secured side, meaning the push side of the door, if it's an in-swing, you need a standard lip. Um, you, you're going to need a uh, Let's see here now. You are you are going to need a standard lip strike, assuming you're centering the lock on that inch and three quarter thick door. If you have an application where it, where it's reverse bevel, not in swing, well now yeah you're going to need a longer lip strike because you have to account for that extra one inch of panel thickness. So whatever side is being extended, assuming it's extended unequally, you've got to think about well what's in the lock on that side of the door that needs to be longer, likely a cylinder again, or the spindle of a thumb turn, or the 5 16 key stock spindles for the trim itself, the mounting screws to go through. If it's a cylindrical lock, you don't need to worry about that stuff in the sense of you're going to order the cylindrical lock saying, and I just requested a quote for a client, um, two and three quarter thick door, this was extended equally. So however the door got to be two and three quarter was made that way. Um, that edge bore is right in the center of the thickness of the door and everything needs to be stretched out for that. Everything needs to be stretched out. Um, when it's unequally extended, that's when you, you need to think about mortise locks, what parts need to go into there. Cylindrical locks, again, the factory is going to build that lock. Um, I find when you're doing mortise locks and unequal door thicknesses, it is helpful to A, understand what needs to be longer, and B, let the factory know what needs to be longer. Um, that allows you to be sure of what you're thinking needs to be longer, and that allows them to see what you're thinking, and when the confirmation comes back, if it matches the expectations, then you're probably in a good, good position. So <clears throat> adjusting this thickness, um, the installation instructions are always extremely, um, from major, are always copious. A lot of printed pages. Very large fonts. I like that. It's easier to read. I'm not, you know, I don't need my instructions in, you know, 4 point, 5 point font on a single sheet of paper. It's nice to have a permanent manual, and that's what that is. They're easier to read, so sometimes when you're reading along the instructions, you're saying, ah, I don't get it. I find that with hardware like this, it's just easy to just play with it and figure out, oh, this is how it must work. This is the only way it can work. So adjusting for door thickness is going to require another Allen wrench. And I think it's the smallest one. <clears throat> yeah, it is the smallest one. 
So here, here we go. I have the tool turned all the way down to its minimum. When I rotate that open, these leaves, because of a left-right bolt scenario, open or spread evenly. When I tighten that down, they close down evenly as well. So let's first, a question that I like to ask is, let's first figure out what is the minimum door thickness? So this will clamp down to about inch and 5 16 which means for an inch and 3 8 door, you'll be able to make this tool work. Let's open this all the way up. I'm sure it'll go to two and a quarter. Yeah, and it does stop. Um, I'm not sure of the mechanism that's forcing it to stop, but it does stop there. Could be the heads on, or counterboard holes and the heads on these bolts, that telescope. Now, oh, okay, two and seven eighths. So up to two and three quarter, this is gonna be able to handle it. That's nice, that actually is the, uh, the description that I was using earlier. Yeah, let's close that down. Okay, so what you do to adjust this is you're going to free the inside plate from that direct communication. You're going to loosen these two screws, and they call them Allen screws, I think, which um, I don't know if that's correct. By the way, technical support over at Major is exceptional. These, the fellows over there really... You can buy tools from companies. They don't know what they're what they're used for, how to use them. The people at Major, they made these tools based on understanding the job that you're doing. I have had equipment from Major, and I've had to call the primary tech guy over there, uh, the gentleman, and say, okay, I got this far, but help me through the rest. He's like, okay, you know this, you know that, you know how you do that. That's what that's for. And I say, yeah, I got it. So I've loosened those two screws. Now what I can do is when I manipulate this handle to spread it out, that knurled knob does not move. Okay. So I'm going to spread that out to inch and three quarter. <clears throat> Yeah, good enough. And also, by the way, because this centers down evenly, it won't be a problem. But inch and three quarter thick doors are usually not inch and three quarter. Inch and three quarter is 1.75. If you have a fire rated wood door, it's probably 1.71. If you have a all the way to the other end, if you have a 14 gauge steel stiffened door, I guarantee you that's inch and seven eighths. So 1.75, that's a nominal dimension. You put a caliper on it, it's, it's rarely 1.75, and that does matter. When you're going to go about mortising something, okay, and it is not in the center of the door thickness, your tool is referencing one side or the other. Or there are times, like plastic laminate, they're using vertical grade, usually vertical grade plastic laminate over an inch and three quarter thick door, you could get out to 1.78. The issue is the rabbit on the frame, that's never going to be different. That's one in 15 sixteenths, right, generally, uh, in, in a hollow metal. If you had a wood frame, you could have the culon curved in weather stripping, that'll certainly be more than one in 15 sixteenths, yeah, or it could be. But you've got to understand, what is your rabbit depth? What is your actual door thickness? So that when you're placing the latch bolt to drill that hole, it's where you want it to be. And equally important, if you're prepping the frame for the strike, it's where you want it to be. You can go through all the work of drilling everything, go to close the door, and you throw the latch, the deadbolt, let's say. Now you've got to file the strike. Why did that happen? Something's off. So being aware of what is off before you drill a hole, that's where this all comes into play. So I've got it set for inch and three quarter. Let's say that we had a two inch thick door and it was biased towards one side. Now what I could do is I could take that plate and I'm turning the neural, the neural knob and you're not able to tell. Well, I guess you can really. I've got a lot more room over here than I do over here. I've just now set this to be biased, to be unequally centered, okay? 
It's that simple. Once you have it the way you like it, it's in the right position, tighten those screws again, and you're off to the races. Do one, do two, do a hundred doors, whatever you're doing. Now, the installation instructions absolutely say, and I'm just going to set this back the way it was by manipulating this bolt. Then I'm going to tighten them back. What the, what the manufacturer says is, hey, when you're done, set it back to the normal condition. The last thing you want to do is take it out of the box. You're in a hurry. It's Saturday. You've got to be somewhere else and drill that hole a quarter inch in the wrong place. There's no easy solution for that. You've got an inch and three quarter thick door and you, you install that latch so far over. Door reinforcer. Restyle the door. Do a full restyle. Cut all that core out, pack new wood in, plane it down, new door. There aren't wider latch bolts. That's the issue. So be mindful. They say set it back, I say set it back. So now I'm I'm recentered again, we're in real good shape. And by the way, always check to make sure the tool is positioning itself where you want it to be. Don't trust that the tool is accurate. Trust that you understand command and mastery over the tool that it's accurate. That will likely serve you well. Um, so that's how you adjust the centering. Now, we're going to move on to... I won't read the adjust centering. We'll do that when we look at the instructions. Using the supplied Allen wrench, install the proper size breakout plate hole saw guide. Two inch and a half and two and an eighth guides are supplied for you. Okay, so... <clears throat> I've had people buy these because this is what your drill bits are making contact with. What you're going to do is, as they show, you're going to take one of those plates right out here and you're going to uh, screw it right to the front, right here. Either two and an eighth or inch and a half. By the way, two and an eighth or inch and a half. There are locks that take an inch and a half hole. Schlage has dead bolts that will take an inch and a half hole. Their current, I think their B60 will go into an inch and a half hole. The B100, which is discontinued. The B400, which is discontinued. The B250, which is not discontinued. All of those will go, would have or do go into an inch and a half hole. Why do you want an inch and a half hole? Well, maybe you don't, but you do. The logic is you're drilling out that much less of the door. The door is going to remain more structurally intact. I buy that every time someone says it to me. You've got more of the door there. You've got more wood, stronger. Also, aesthetically, there's less, usually less footprint. Oh, Baldwin too. Baldwin does an inch and a half. Uh, go inch and a half. Baldwin is like inch and five eighths. I wish it was inch and a half. Baldwin has smaller profile, shorter projection, cleaner looking deadbolts, smaller holes generally. Take advantage of those smaller holes. You may not be able to, well, you could still use your tool. I mean, you're going to use a hole saw. Well, unless you can find a multi-spur bit that's inch and five-eighths, if you're doing Baldwin. Kaba Ilko, those are inch and seven-eighths minimum hole. I would still use this. You know, you're not going to be able to exit. You're going to have to reposition this on the other side to drill halfway through. Um, so that's why you get two of each. There's just one of each in each package. Now, you may not need two of each. You're going to get two of each. You'll use one only when you're using the uh, multi-spur. This is the multi-spur guide tower, I think it's called. So your multi-spur bit, it's quite obvious, I think, how this is going to work. All I did was sneak that, let me show you, all I did was sneak that through here all the way in. I'm captured. I'm ready to roll. This is ready to go. I'll have my bushing here, maybe my spade bit in here with my brass bushing. This hole goes first. Your two and an eighth plate will be mounted out here. This comes back. You come over here. You do that operation. You're all set. Um, where you would use the second plate is if you were using a hole saw in a steel door. You would remove your 
multi spur but guide your multi spur bit guide tower you'd put a plate on this side you'd have a plate on the other side if you're using a hole saw on a steel door let's say now anyway I'll get into that later hole saws and wood doors and that's all that's all there is to that there's nothing else to say so let's move on to talking about the different drill bits uh, next If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. Let's go back to the breakout plate for a minute. It's going to be, um, they're held in with uh, screws that are included. Just die cast sink. Okay. Fasteners are here. Allen wrench will be the Allen wrenches that are included. Uh, moving on through the installation instructions, the next section talks about the uh, drill bits, the cutting tools that are included. So it says the most popular bits used in the HIT 55, top to bottom. So they're showing an image of it. So drilling the edge of the door is going to be the one inch spade bit. You can buy that cutter on its own. You can sharpen that obviously, very typical and very common. Um, a note is that if, when you're doing a 5 inch back set this would be the only bit long enough to reach as far back as you need they do have uh, multi spur bits a 7 8 and a 1 inch that aren't included you can buy those there's also a brad point bit uh, in a 7 8 and a 1 inch not included I believe it's solid carbide uh, now they talk about clamping the door. Simply determine the height and clamp. What they mean is with a lock installation kit like this, because so much of the process has become ritualized, meaning you don't have to measure two and three quarter. It's done for you. you I mean, you have to make sure the tool's set up correctly. These bolts have to come out. Um, and you should be, of course, putting a tape measure on it to make sure the tool is in the right place. Um, the only thing that you really must be responsible for is making sure that you're prepping it at the proper height. If you're adding a deadbolt to a door, whether it's four and a half inch, six inch, seven and eleven sixteenths, who cares what the center to center is for the most part. Um, you just have to make sure that you're repeatable. So you'll have your dimension, you will strike a line on the uh, on the work, and then you will place this is what you're going to end up doing. Um, you know, I'd really have to think about what I would use as a point of reference on this to find my center line. I would pick a, something on the tool that would allow me to, when I placed it on there, I would measure down. I would use a combination square to with a very light pencil line. I would then line my tool up to that pencil line and I would just have to figure out where I was going to use what I was going to use for that. What would be nice is if there was a you know maybe here if there was a um, engraving that was done that would show you the exact center line of the tool that would be nice. You'll have to come up with something Um, even out here a horizontal line went across you could then line it up on the edge you could mark to the on the edge of the door combination square horizontal line slide this down and speaking of sliding you can then line it up you'll have to figure out something like that they haven't made a provision for that as far as I can tell um, I would I would need to find a provision for that because I'm going to want if I want 7 11 16 I want that every single time center to center uh, speaking of clamping that on the door it's interesting that you can have a wood door or a birch door or any veneer and you won't see any imperfections in the veneer until after it's finished sanded 
stained, stained again. You won't see any micro abrasions until that's after it's finished. We did a job one time for a Brooks Brothers clothing store and we were running the lumber through our, our planer. And there were some rubber drums, some synthetic drums that were on the inside of it that were leaving an impression mark. You couldn't see it. You couldn't even feel it when you ran your hand over it. But sure enough, when it was finished, you saw that perfect center to center of that drum. So they have a rubber pad system that's here. Okay, So as you go to clamp this down, you're not going to be leaving an impression mark. When we have tooling that we're clamping to a door, it's very normal for us to take and sand that aluminum or whatever it's made of down. Maybe put masking tape over it before you take that and clamp it to the door. Because you may not see the, the, the marks that you'll leave until, quite frankly, it's a bit too late. Um, so that rub these rubber pads are really nice. You want the tool to be tight so it doesn't fall, but nothing beyond that. It's just not necessary. Crushing the door in um, is, doesn't work to your advantage. So to clamp the door, simply determine the height and clamp. The HIT 55 was designed to clamp without the need to adjust a cantilever knob. They're obviously referring to a, a, a competitor's tool that requires that you turn something on the other side. Rubber line jaws will protect the door as well as give a better non-slip grip. With the 3 8 backside adapters installed, which they are, you can do 2 and 3 8 or 5 inch. Uh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, their page 8 is a bit goofed up on their electronic version. It says... No. I have the original here. When drilling through the door, use a slower speed and be sure to back out the drill several times. This will allow wood chips to be cleared from the work. This will provide a cleaner cut and a cooler running bit. Yeah, no doubt. <clears throat> so whether you're drilling into brass or steel, especially wood, you want to pull that bit out, clear out the material that you've cut, get that evacuated out of there, um, and then continue on a slow, steady, moderate amount of force, let the tool do the work. I was told that when I was very young and it just turns out that it's the best way. Don't push it too hard, the bit will heat up and it will become ineffective rather quickly. Just let it do the work. After you, be, you become attuned to feeling the bit, you can tell when it's advancing. Anyway, that's something that comes with experience and it comes with not wanting to spend more money on cutting tools. Generally when I have a cutting tool, uh, you know, the high speed steel uh, multi-spur bit. You can get those sharpened. Back in the old days we used to work with AAA saw and tool in Chicago and twice a week uh, Joe would come in and collect all the customers drop-offs. He would leave, he would drop off all the hand saws and all the other cutting tools and I find that you can have that material sharpened and you sure would. They're not disposable um, but it becomes a backup at that point as far as I'm concerned. Um, when drilling a 5 inch backset cross bore, you will need to use one of the longer spade type bits. Yeah, we've talked about that, the 1 inch long spade bit for the 5 inch. Once you have drilled the required function holes, complete the job with our marking and locating tools, making your job faster and more professional. Okay, let's talk about those marking tools. We went over the three that are included. I had said earlier that I didn't know if that was one inch or inch and an eighth. It's really both, meaning it's set to one inch right now. You will remove these screws. You will take this shim plate off, this silver piece of metal. You'll stick it underneath the cutting edge and voila, you have inch and, a, inch and an eighth wide. So two and a quarter, one inch or inch and an eighth. This is going to fit down into your bore. That looks like it's going to be a one inch hole, however. Well, it really should. Yeah, it's one inch. So if you're drilling 7 8 this isn't going to fit, is the bottom line. If you're drilling a 7 8 hole, this marking tool is not going to work because that will sit into the hole. 
Uh, and what the factory recommends is you use a combination square to mark a horizontal line so you can line that up. You don't want your latch bolt prep you know, to not be perfectly vertical. So people will get that on there and they'll just smack the daylights out of this to impress yourself that rectangular edge. And then, well, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So I showed you how to convert that or told you how, <clears throat> how to mark it, one inch hole only. Uh, mark for the faceplate. Use a sharp box cutter. So now you've got some scored lines in the edge of your door. They actually show a utility blade scoring that. Uh, I personally, I, I wouldn't use that tool at all. <clears throat> um, a hammer and chisel, light tapping on that works. One inch wide, inch and an eighth wide, two and a quarter tall, get in there. And all you're trying to do is just deepen that is all you're doing. At that point, they're showing you come with a hammer and chisel and then clean that out to 532nd deep. That is the thickness of a latch bolt. Now, I don't use any of those tools for doing it at all, ever. It takes too long. The result doesn't look very nice. Porter Cable makes a, a template, a, a latch face template that you can use for other things. You set it up for a two and a quarter by inch and an eighth size. You have your center line. You tighten it down on the edge of the door, and it might be the 518, I can, well, I can tell you because our customers are going to look at this video and then go search for the tool. So let me just tell you what it is. Maybe a 513. Nope, 513 is the mortise pocket maker. I've owned so many of those, it's Unfortunate that I don't remember the part number. Ah, it's the 517. So the Porter Cable 517, that's what you want every single time. You have your small horsepower router with your half inch two flute carbide bit. You clamp that down at the right center line and within seconds you're done, perfect. Then what do you use? Your corner chisel and clean that out. So the latch marking tools, I, I never use these. Now, in a frame, I'm going to use them because it's better than nothing because I can't get my router template onto the, an existing jam. So that's where I would use not a latch marking tool, but a marking tool, the strike marking tool of the two strike marking. You can't see those. The two strike marking tools that are included. This, for the frame, is where I use those. Um, all right, now moving... After you've got that lock preparation, the lock edge preparation done, the next thing to do is to use your strike locating tool. You've got a two and an eighth inch hole. Close the door, slide this through, and you're going to mark that point. It's nice. It shows you where to drill. No guesswork. Okay. I don't know if this quick change tool is going to be in here or not. Um, Makes it faster from jumping from one bit to the other, but we'll see if it's spoken about in here. All right, we are on the last page of the instructions. Now all they say is use one of their self-centering, their centering drills to drill for the latch screw, meaning the 832, the number eight diameter screw for drilling the two holes for the latch bolt. They make what I would know as a VIX bit, V-I-X. It is a, uh, it's a self-centering spring-loaded um, pre-drill tool. If you're doing work on doors, have a set of VIX bits. Sixes, eights, tens, twelves, whatever they make. Whatever you'll use. Um, and the self-centering VIX type bit is not only going to put it in the right center point of your latch bolt, but it's the proper diameter hole in general for what you're drilling. After that, you install your lock. You're in good shape. So they did not talk about the quick change tool. This is basically going to allow you just quickly to be able to work from one bit to the other, okay? Because what, what's the issue? Um, you're going to want to be able to remove. You're going to want to be able to get the drill off the tool, off the contraption, because what's hanging off on this? A long spindle on your multi-spur bit, a long spindle uh, shank on your spade bit, you're going to want to get your half-inch Milwaukee off of that, and that's what this part is for.
There is an Allen wrench left over that is likely for some sort of tool work. And then there are these three standoffs, these posts. I don't know what these are for. They don't appear to be listed on the bill of materials for this. Yeah. Let's see if we can find out quickly what these are for. Let's do that. If you've made it this far into this video, you must be determined to see it through to the end, and we appreciate your hanging in there with us and watching this entire video. It means a lot. It takes a lot of work to create these videos in the sense that, um, you know, it's time taken away from doing other things. However, the advantage for me personally of creating these videos is the fact that it does allow myself to either learn about something new, to uh, reacquaint myself with something, or to reinforce what I believe that I already know. Any comments that you might leave down below would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. 551. You may ask all you want. Thank you, sir. In the package, there are three plastic standoff type bushings. What are, are those? For? Are they round plastic? Yes, sir. Okay. What happens? In that kit, you're going to find like a latch marker. Yeah. It's a square blo steel block with a handle on it, and there's going to be three different types. If you look at the front of them, they have like a plastic uh, oh, yeah. piece in it. That's for a one-inch uh, latch hole. If you have a seven-eighths inch latch hole, it's going to be too big, so you take the screw out, put the smaller one in, put the screw back in. You can now do a seven-eighths inch hole. Thank you for clarifying that. I just yeah. went on to tell someone that this latch marker tool is only going to work for one size hole. <laughs> <laughs> we will get that resolved. Uh, Major once again has that thought through. So awesome. Thank you very much for clarifying That's that. From years out in the field, I ran across that myself and I go, damn, I wish this thing was adjustable. So when I got to build my own, never put a tool junkie in charge of building tools. No, sir. You'll end up with a catalog. You'll end up with a catalog 108 pages long. <laughs> All right, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye. Regarding the links to ads that you might see in this video, we do apologize for any interruption to a smooth viewing experience. And hopefully the ads that are being presented to you are related to the base product. And if there is something, feel free to click on those and perhaps consider taking a look at what that other advertiser is promoting. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so I believe um, I may have said something earlier about the exceptional technical support. That unknown Allen wrench, yep, that is for sure going to allow that plastic bushing to come out. Uh, and then this unknown piece, that's your 7 8 I believe the words were you don't put a tool junkie in charge of making tools because you will <laughs> that's the length of the major catalog 108 pages long so that is awesome so the one that's in here is automatically for one inch and that is the unknown allen wrench as well as everything else that's in the kit Right, okay, so I've confirmed that that's everything in the kit. Now, I'm not, I'm really not an advocate of tools like this, and it's because I think they take too long to use. Um, however, I'm really in the minority of opinion regarding that uh, type of attitude. I understand why people like lock installation kits, because it ritualizes the behavior. You can't make a mistake on using the wrong diameter bit at the wrong location when this doesn't allow you to drill it wrong. So if you're the superintendent and you've got one or two people there and you buy one or two of these kits and you set it up for it, you say, go. The only thing you got to do is double check that vertical height, 
you're you're giving them one bit here you're giving them one bit here you're giving them some way to ch hammer and chisel for the edge of the, the style of the door uh, it's hard to make a mistake gotta have the right height that's it it ritualizes the behavior now when I do it I'll do it arguably much faster but my method is certainly more prone to making mistakes however I counteract that by the fact that I you know the old axiom measure twice and cut once put my tape measure down mark my location I've got my whole routine of doing it which is mark the center line I have a quick set angle back set finder that used to come in there quick set 138 a, a, a kit like this even uh, even though it was far inferior in terms of build quality it's discontinued so I'd get my two and three quarter back set. I would flip it over, mark it on the other side. It was smart enough so that it was giving me the right back set on a beveled edge door, meaning it was bent at the right angle, at the correct angle. Now I've got my height, a horizontal line where my, you know, whatever dimension, 38 and one six, 38 and an eighth. I've got my edge prepped, marked. I take that back set finder and mark the face of my door on both sides. First thing I do, two and an eighth inch bimetal hole saw. They're cheap. They allow you to drill into a wood door. They're flat bottom in the sense that you know when you're drilling straight when all the teeth around its circumference are hitting at the same time. Drill halfway through, you gotta clean out all the wood that's packed that's now packed in there. Go to the other side, clean the hole out. Generally really good, nice and tight. Those bits are long lasting and very inexpensive. Then one inch spade bit right down to the edge. Like Porter cable 517 centered. It's got a, I mark it right in the center where my vertical center line is. Clamp that down, my router, corner chisel, I'm done. I'm done. Um, as long as I've measured twice and cut once, I don't make a mistake. And my error rate personally is quite small. You can put this tool at the wrong height. You know, it's just, you're going to measure twice. But you don't have to explain to somebody back sets on a beveled edge door the fact that two and three quarter on the high side and the low side will be holes that don't line up you won't have to worry about this is why it's one inch well, you know we need to use a one inch spade bit for this clamp it on drill drill take it off you know do the edge and you're done so i mean i've had conversations with clients who've bought lock installation kits and spoke about the way i do it and they said ah keep it to yourself I'd rather have this. How many times a year do you use it? I don't care. If I used it twice a year, it's well worth the investment. So I get that, absolutely. And the fact that we stock a kit like this, that we sell kits like this, tells me that, yes, I'm very much in the minority position of, of how I would go about prepping for a door. If you're going to use it on a steel door, you know, that's, you're going to want to make sure the tool is extremely clean before putting it onto a wood door. Some people will not use the, a tool on a steel door like a metal clad door or a hollow metal door for that that matter they won't ever put it onto a wood door they might have two tools or they just won't do steel doors with it at all they'll do that by hand you're gonna get micro metal shards on the inside of these rubber pads and they forever scratch the face of your door sliding that on sliding it up sliding it over that will be awful you would never want to be in that position um, I think at this point we're going to switch now to the screen view and look at a series of photographs that I have and we're going to look at the manual up close and then we'll wrap this up. Thank you. Okay, here is what we are looking at. And it's going to be a bit to dive in here uh, as we look at the extended description of this. So let's let's take a look. We've got the hit 551. Drill Master 2. There must be a Drill Master 1. I don't <laughs> I don't know what is a drill what what's a Drill Master 1, but would you rather have the 1 or the 2? Uh, drill Master 2 kit door lock installation tool. Drill Master 2 complete ready to go installation kit for standard door locks. The newest kit contains the fit uh, the Hit 551 Drill Master 2 packed in a foam lined toolbox. Um yeah. Rubber line jaws, adjustable. Two and three eighths, two and three quarter, three and three quarter, five inch. Door range, inch and three eighths to two and five eighths, they say. Um, can be used on both wood and steel doors. 
talked about that. And we'll accept guide bits as well as hole saws. Guided bits. Guided bits. Multi-spur, obviously. This is a list of everything that's in the kit that we've gone over. Yeah, the only thing, it's missing one part, the brass bushing is not listed here. So everything, I just quickly looking at this, it's all here except that brass, brass bushing. Yeah, uh, sold as each, when you buy one, we'll ship you one. So there is a link below this video to the product brochure. We'll go through that in a moment. There's a link to the installation instructions. We'll go through that in a moment. But then there are several images that I'd like to show you. And somewhat in no particular order, there's the case. There's the Hit 55, and then a variety of different perspectives and views on that. Your um, guide bit towers, those are called. Let's back up. Guide bit towers, adjusting knob. Obviously, it's set right now to do 2 and 3 eighths or 5 inch with that bolt installed. Just your guide posts that the plates open and close on. The opposite side, these are the two screws that you loosen when you want to adjust the center. You can then take this knurled brass knob and rotate that to shift only the one-sided one plate. Looking down into the center, your rubber pads can be seen here and here. The back, the edge of the door, this is where you'll insert one of the three bushings, hold it in place with this screw. Let's look at another set of images here showing the bushing on the back of the guide tower. I'm trying to show the rubber mat here. Down into the throat of it. Your knob. Another perspective on it. Your cutting tools. 1 inch spade, 2 and an eighth multi spur high speed steel, um, inch and a half high speed steel. Use that inch and a half every time you, your lock will allow it. Just another view. Those are not self drilling points or self starting points. If there were threads cut on those, you would see that. It probably wouldn't be triangular shaped either at that point. Self feeding, actually. Now, self feeding bits. Um, I don't actually prefer because I like to be in control of how the tool, uh, at what rate the tool makes contact with the face of what I'm drilling into, the door, um, prefer to push them. But if you know it's self-drilling and you adapt your behavior, then it's not such a big deal. Your spade bit, again, you can buy that separately. Your multi-spur bit, nice view of that triangular point. The shank on your multi-spur. Uh, actually, that may have been... Yeah, that's the shank on the multi-spur bit. Same as the spade bit as well. Your marking tools. <clears throat> two and a quarter, two and a quarter two and three quarter, one inch, inch and an eighth. Typical, you know, if you're doing a, a uh, an extended lip strike, this may not be long enough. Um, that would be unusual. Then of course your deadbolt strike. What's missing from here? Um, nothing, nothing really. I mean, what's what what other type of strike would you do? Well, you, you could do a T-strike, a two and three quarter T-strike in a wood frame. You could do a four and seven eight strike in a wood frame. Yeah, if you're doing a mortise lock, for sure, two and three, you're going to have a four and seven eight strike there. Um, 
I don't believe strike marking tools exist for four and seven eighths. They may for two and three quarter. I think there's a company called Bighorn that may make those. Um, they make lock installation tools, but they are at the opposite end of build quality uh, compared to major. Another perspective, that is, those are the little um, guides that you remove. Uh, seven eighths or one inch per our earlier conversation. Set up for one inch now. Let's see if we have, yeah, we probably just have the remainder of parts. Your bat, your, uh, breakout plate. So what's a breakout plate? A breakout plate is basically when your multi-spur bit is exiting. When your multi-spur bit is exiting out here, that breakout plate is there to keep the bit, you know, making contact with um, the plate rather than your tool. So it, it, it allows you to have that bit exit safely as well without damaging the tool or what you're drilling into. Sometimes you'll have one installed. You'll always have one installed. You may have two. If you're doing steel doors, you'll take your, your guide towers off. There are the seven eighths for the latch marking, for the marking tools, your three and three quarter back set posts. Initially unknown. Three and three quarter back set posts. Then your instructions. Speaking of the instructions, let's switch to those right now. Okay, let's dive into the installation instructions just momentarily. Um, we've already gone through this, just not looking at it. So, just to touch on or to summarize, comes out of the box for two and three eighths and five inch. If you want to adjust that, you're going to remove the, what they call the back set studs. Keep them safely here. Then you'll be able to do two and three quarter. Probably how you're going to leave it normally or usually. You want um, you want to do three and three quarter. Add your back set studs. Okay. Um, unfortunately, there's no place on the tool to secure those. They'll stay in your tackle box. Hit 55 drill guide with the three and three quarter installed. There are three drill guides supplied with the Hit 55 for use when drilling the edge bore. They are held in with an Allen screw. Choose seven eighths, one inch, or the brass guide. The brass guide uh, is what you'll use with the multi, pardon me, with the spade bit. Or multi spur bit, they say. So you're not getting multi spur bits with this for the edge, though they can be ordered. To adjust the centering, we talked about that. You loosen these two screws. You can then turn this knurled brass knob, and it will allow you to move this plate only, maintaining whatever center line to this plate that you've established. So I would go about creating the size, setting the size to the door thickness and then moving this plate as required. I won't read all of that. We've, we've talked about it. You can review that. The breakout plates, they're held on with the uh, screws that are included. Install the proper size breakout plate, hole saw guide. Uh, hole saw guide would mean the towers will come off and you'll put one of these on each side and then use a hole saw. Two inch and a half and two and an eighth guides are supplied. For steel door use, remove the multi-spur guide on opposite side and replace those towers that I keep referring to. That's the part number for the breakout plates. That would be considered a maintenance, a consumable product. Eventually, you'll probably want to replace those. Uh, they'll get gouged. 
scored. Bits for the edge. You'll get the spade bit. They give you the part numbers for the multi-spur bits. As well as the spade bit. And it's the only one that you'll use for the 5 inch back set. So when this tool is put together, you'll have your multi-spur bit shank coming out, as will the bit you're going to use for the edge. Uh, they also have a brad point bit, 7 8 and 1 inch diameter. Part numbers are there. That would probably be the tool that I would prefer to use. If you're not using the spade bit, this is what it's going to look like. To clamp to door, simply determine the height and clamp. The HIT 55 was designed to clamp without the need to adjust a cantilever knob. Rubber lined jaws will protect the door as well as give a better non slip grip. With the 3 8 back set adapters installed, you can drill 2 and 3 8 and 5 inch at, you know, in the same setting. This cantilever knob, I mentioned it earlier. Um, the gentleman who likely worked on designing this tool may have been using a lock installation kit from the 80s would be my guess um, and I do recall that there was there was a tool I don't recall who would have made it but there was a knob on both sides that you had to adjust now you're ready to do a 5 inch back set with your bit over here versus 2 and 3 eighths this is the page that's goofed up but you can see it in your uh, manual Drilling a 5 inch crossbore, you will need to use the longer spade bit. Yeah, we understand that. And what it says in here is that when you're drilling the hole, be sure to clear out your work, the chips, several times. Marking tools. This talks about how you can move those shims. He's got it set now to inch and an eighth. That's your latch marking tool part number. You can see evidence of probably the brad point bit that's here. Maybe maybe the multi-spur, just touching it. I usually drill that in a little bit deeper, about a quarter inch. It's not unusual to find a lock that might need a little extra room down in there. Um, not much, just a small amount. Mark for the faceplate. Make sure that it's square, true plumb level and square, you don't want that to look odd. They are, they are nice to mark to mark the location. Um, that router is the way to go. I'll make a video someday demonstrating that. Use a sharp box cutter to deepen the vertical outline. Sure, I get it. I understand. Um, this is the way this gentleman went about doing it. Um, Uh, obviously mark it, mallet, chisel, you get the rest of the picture, you chisel all that out. Strike locator now. Don't forget to mark the strike for the uh, the jam for the strike plate. There's your part number for that. Super easy. Uh, an old carpenter, uh, old carpenter's trick told to me by an old time carpenter. They would install the deadbolt they would put lipstick on the edge of the bolt itself and then throw the bolt and that would mark the jam. I talked earlier about a VIX bit. That will allow you to pre-drill that hole perfectly. Self-centering. That's all there is to it. There you go. Now, there is a link below this video. Uh, several links below here. That we give you to those part numbers. So if you you know if you want to if you need those breakout plates, you can get right to it from that link. The product brochure is here. Let's take a look at that. Uh, this is going to show <laughs> the Drillmaster One must have been a, a prior tool. Um, the Hit Fifty Five is much is is. Every, is the material is the kit without the cutting tools basically so you're going to be able to drill those four back sets but you won't get any cutting tools if you you know if you're going to do the job completely with the exception of not getting a couple of cutting tools for the edge of the door 
the hit 551 is probably the way to go. Um, you know, it's a, these tools are not inexpensive, but they are investment quality, that's for sure. I'll leave you to uh, I'll leave this to you to review, and then your breakout plates are here. Now there is a, a link below this video, as seen here, to the manufacturer's page. And from here, we can pull up not only all of the major products we sell by means of this horizontal navigation as seen here. There is also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. That is a trip into a slice of heaven for a tool junkie, as we heard that term earlier. If it comes to door work, this catalog is... It certainly represents the most comprehensive offering from a single manufacturer. That's all there is to it. There are several different platforms of ways to approach how to prep doors and frames for various types of hardware. In this catalog, half of it is dedicated to that for sure, the second half. The first half is security hardware. Um, if you are an integrator, you're a locksmith, you're someone who deals with uh, providing security on a variety of different types of applications, exteriors of buildings, residential, interior. You might want to take a look at the items that are in here. Uh, you'll find things that you may not know existed. You might find things that say that you say to yourself, I could actually use that. That makes sense. I have a need for that. Only a person who spent years in the field could concoct, imagine, needs like this. Jam pins. Jam pins. No one thinks about them. A jam pin is the poor man's version of a non-removable pin hinge. Uh, there's even a poorer man's version of the jam pin. I'll talk about that in a moment. You could. The concept here is you can drive the pin out of the hinge, drive it out. But with that jam pin sticking into the hole on the opposite side of that hinge, you might have the pin removed, but you're not going to get the door out not without severely spreading it open. Okay. Another version of a jam pin. Now the this is the poor man's NRP hinge. The poor poor man's NRP hinge is a oh, is a 16 uh, penny double head nail. There we go. That's an image of a 16 penny double head nail. Drive that into your jam after pre drilling the hole, or you'll split it. Drill a hole in the door for the double head feature of the nail, and you have yourself the poor, poor man's version of the NRP hinge. Uh, what are 16 penny double head nails used for? Well, when you're doing a concrete, when you're building concrete forms, you're going to pour a sidewalk. You're going to use 16 penny double head nails so you can pull the nails out because you're going to reuse all of the wood that you've used to create the form. The poor, poor man's version. Uh, lock installation tabs, things of that nature. Guides, other security hardware. Um, There's only there's one other item I'd like to show you in here before I before I get to the door material locksmithing tools. That's the cylinder extension kits that are here. So very often I will have a need to make a three inch cylinder, and I have plenty of videos where I've done done so. I uh, I need a two inch cylinder. I need a four inch cylinder. I need it. I need it now. I need it. I need it to ship tomorrow. Well, I stock these extensions. I also use the tool as well. I stock the extensions. I stock standard inch, one inch, inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter mortise cylinders. Well, with those standard cylinders and these extensions, I can give you, you know, a two and a quarter inch mortise cylinder now. Or I can stack those together and give you a five inch mortise cylinder. Why would you need that? Well, there are reasons why you would need those. But what you for sure know is it's not in stock. This works out really well. Components that you would need to do that type of work. And it's going to end up looking like that when all is said and done. Except the ones I've made can go off this page. They've been so long. Work, they work really great. 
Uh, now, getting down here, about halfway through the catalog, you're going to get into door installation, specialty installation tools. There are different ways to skin this cat. And I would encourage you to dive into that, into this, and uh, familiarize yourself with it. Drill guide for extension flush bolts. You ever try to drill a 12-inch extension flush bolt in a wood door? Don't try it freehand. You can. You'll be a wood door ninja if you can do it straight without breaching through any part of the door. I've never used this tool from Major, but I have used it from others. Um, I, I yeah two drywall screws um, I don't know that I would prefer to do that work with just holding it in with drywall screws and a wood door I mean for residential application that's going to work fine um, I would prefer a clamping system is what I'm driving at. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a way to clamp onto the door. Anyway, um, investigate this part of the catalog. Mortise locks, cylindrical locks, a variety of electrified hardware function holes. And I've made videos on lots of this stuff in here. Not, not all of it, but, but much of it or at least, you know, an example of it. I may not have done this lock plate, but I I've I may not have done the arrow lock plate, but I sure have done the Schlage one. Same concept. Let's wrap up this video on camera. So why consider major when it comes to spending lots of money on investment quality tools? Well, I think it's demonstrated earlier, you know, I said, let's find out what these are for. Call, dial the number, guy who picks up the phone. He's the guy, he's the guy, he's the guy who came up with the idea, knows exactly what it's for. It's that technical support. You, you know, once you have the tool and you go through it, you go from absolute beginner to total master after you've used it a couple of times. Before you get to the point where you have received the tool, you bought it and you've received it and you're ready to use it, you need to figure out how does this work? And it's a bit difficult at arm's length, you know, before you make the purchase to decide whether or not it's a tool that's going to work for you. So this video serves as somewhat to that purpose, but what I'm saying is rely on a manufacturer who absolutely passionately supports the product and I think that that evidence from earlier in this video um, is proof of that is the bottom line. Great quality tool. Um, I now, why am I not? Why am I in the minority view when it comes to using it? As I had said earlier, I demonstrated, or I, I discussed how I would go about doing it. I simply find that I'm in less control when I use this tool. I want to measure everything. I want to be sure. I want to be drilling the hole myself and, and watching exactly how it's going. I want to go through those steps. But if but that's unusual in the sense of this kind of tool is mostly, <clears throat> it's bought by two different types of people. People that are going to use it and people that are never going to use it. Okay, People that are going to use it, <clears throat> that's the handyman, that's the locksmith, the one man outfit type of situation. They know how to use it, they're expert with it, they would never consider drilling a deadbolt prep by hand and they would only use their kit. <clears throat> Um, they'll use it on their steel door. I, I had a guy come in, bought, had to buy a quick set 138 in the early 90s. And um, yeah, I used it on, I said, well, you just bought one six months ago. Why are you buying another one? I used it on a steel door. And now the tools, I can't put it on a wood door anymore. So he bought a second one for a wood door. So the people who use them, and then there's the people who will never use them. And when the people who never use them usually buy two or three or more, so you've got a job, you've got a hundred doors. Everyone's working double time on Saturday to come in and drill these hundred doors because the locks aren't prepped. That person's going to buy them. He's going to understand how to use them. He's then going to train two or three other people on how to use them. And then they're going to go out to the job and do them. And then those tools will be returned to the person who bought them to go into the tool 
corral, their tool lockup storage, you know, if it's a contractor. Um, and it's the latter is why these tools really exist because the, the person who's going to be actually doing the work, he's not a, you know, a, a Gary Katz, a Bob, you know, Vila. They, these aren't people who make a living, you know, you know, thinking about woodworking all day long. They're just people doing a job. Uh, so ritualizing the process is where that comes in. And that's why these tools exist. Um, you know, don't, don't, you know, you're going to, you're going to take out these back set studs or it's a hospital. You're going to put in the two, the uh, three and three quarter and you're, and you're going to remove one of these parts. You'll remove this one. What are you going to remove? You're going to remove this tower. You put on your breakout plate. You're going to give the person a bit that's installed here, a bit that's installed there, and you're going to tell him or her, mark it to your center line, figure out where that is, clamp it. I want you to drill this hole. I want you to drill this hole. I want you to pull the bits out. I want you to clean up the mess, and I want you to back this off and go to the next door. And you're done in minutes. So we've really ritualized the process when we've said here, you know, and then you demonstrate it once. Now, what I like to do when I'm prepping doors is if it's, if you have another person available in a shop vac, have them right there with the shop vac capturing all, because multi-spur bits are really messy. They're, they're awful. They are really ripping everything. The other reason I like hole saws is because they really minimize the amount of wood dust, chips that are created. Um, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, it's harder to get that core pushed out of the hole saw, but, you know, there, there are slots on the side of the hole saw that you can get that pushed out. If it's a fire rated door, you're going to want two things. You're going to want three things. A second person, a shop vac, and a second person, a shop vac, and you are definitely going to need the ability to clean the tool. Fire rated doors, assuming that it's permissible for you to drill the door in the first place. I'm speaking to people who are permitted to do it. You can't drill a two and an eighth inch. Drilling a, drilling a fire door in the field for a deadbolt would be technically a violation. If, if you were a, a licensed shop, that you are permitted to do it, as we have been, that person and that shop vac, you want to capture that mineral core as you're drilling it. Absolutely, no questions asked. Um, you're going to want to completely clean the... Oh, the third thing was a compressor. Uh, person, shop vac, compressor. After you, you don't want to explode all of that mineral core up into the air. It's You can feel it in your lungs and it doesn't go away. And in fact, I think my, my negligent approach to... People always have eye protection and ear protection, but a lot of time what's forgotten is lung protection. And I know I ignored that for a long time. I was really good with this. I was great with this, but this I was awful on. And I, I feel like I can still feel it in right here in my chest. So you don't want to breathe that in. Capture it as soon as you can. Um, when you're done with the tool, you must thoroughly clean it. That mineral core will destroy threaded components um, every single time, in fact. So the tool must be thoroughly, ex very well cleaned, um, is my tip. That mortise pocket maker, the 516, the Porter Cable, I have literally ruined those tools because I haven't kept them clean enough, uh, is the bottom line. And in fact, I find... Um, and it's really just the bronze bushings. Um, I find that the older versions of those tools are more tolerant to that sort of work uh, when it comes to mineral corridors. So anyway, um, I'm going to package this tool up. I hope that if you have any questions on this, uh, feel free to reach out. I hope that you consider major tools uh, in the future. Um, so far, so good. Thank you very much. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.